Hey guys, today's Motor Coach World episode is sponsored by 4Patriots LLC. 4Patriots is a company that sells products to those who want to become more self-reliant and prepared. Whether you need gear to go on a long camping trip or a short hike, or even those who just want to go off grid and live in, let's say, an RV or a camper permanently, 4Patriots LLC is the perfect place to find gear to help you get your adventure on. Randy from 4Patriots sent me a bunch of their tactical solar flashlights as well as their battery packs to try out. In return, Randy wanted a genuine, honest review from me, so I gave out some of these flashlights and batteries packs to some of my drivers and technicians. At the end of today's video, I'll give a quick review on these flashlights and battery packs to let all of you in on how the drivers and I felt about these items after using them for about four months now. But first, on with today's video. Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. A few videos ago, I did a video on why so many of my viewers from Europe find buses in North America so ugly. If you haven't watched that one yet, well, the link will be down below and up here if you want to check it out. Well, you guys seem to really enjoy that one, and I really enjoyed reading the passionate comments that I got from some of you. I mean, really really passionate comments. No! No! Well, shortly after I made that video, I went to the National Bus Expo in Long Beach, California. And while there, I had the pleasure of meeting several European bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts. Bus nuts like Magne and Tom, who came all the way from Norway. They have a very popular website and YouTube channel called Bus Magazina in Norway and they came all the way here to see what buses are like here in the US. Also bus nuts like the twin brothers Benedito and Giovanni Scalabrini, who came all the way from Italy to represent their company, Scalabro's Bus and RV Components. I also had the pleasure of interviewing the CEO of Daimler-Benz Coach Division, Dr. Thomas Rose, the CEO of Timsa Bus, Mr. Tolga Khan Dogancelu, and last but definitely not least, the CEO of Irizar, Mr. Daniel Scarpino, who informed me that he is a fan of my channel and actually used my videos to acclimate himself to the bus industry here in the US. What an honor. I mean, Mr. Scarpino, if you're watching this, I just wanna let you know, you made my whole trip telling me that. And of course, with the chance to talk to all these awesome people from Europe, I definitely didn't pass up the chance to put each of these bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts from the European bus industry in the spotlight and ask them whether or not they found buses here in North America ugly in comparison to their bus designs back home. Now, unfortunately, my GoPro decided not to capture any of the audio during my interview with the CEO of Daimler-Benz, Dr. Tomas Rose, so I have nothing to show for what Tomas answered. So Tomas, if you're watching this, please, if you're willing to, I would love to do a Zoom interview with you again and put that on a future YouTube video. Guys, I got so frustrated with my GoPro this trip. It cost me a lot of great content. But today, we're gonna see what each of these reputable bus nuts from Europe have to say about what they think about North American bus designs, at least from the ones that my GoPro actually recorded properly. I'm Giovanni and Giovanni. he's Benedetto. Benedetto. Ben and Joe. And you're the what brothers? Twin brothers. Twin brothers? Yes. Scalabrini brothers. Scalabrini brothers and they make bus blinds. Yes. They're from Italy. You know, all the comments I get, a lot of Europeans always ask me, why are the buses in America so ugly? <laughs> when you guys look at the buses we use here in North America, do you find them uglier or not as pleasant to look at? Can I answer? Please. Frankly, yes, I, as frank as you can. I want the truth. When I watch, uh, you know, there is the museum there of the old buses. Yes. When I see this kind of old uh, Greyhound in aluminum, yes. I love it. Oh. And so I like the American style of the buses. I, I would never change because, the, yes, the European style is maybe more modern, more stylish, but I like the American style. It's more... Uh, you prefer the American yeah. style? Okay, okay. Like here, I would never but change it. Because, I would never abandon it because for... Because uh, is very conservative, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it's uh, true what, uh, what you say. So, I mean, your coaches, 
especially the school buses, yeah? Very old technology inside. Yeah. So I think in Europe we are more developed in the, in the components, in the, in the style, and also in the finishing inside. If you look uh, in Europe now, we pay much attention that is uh, to have um, very aerodynamic aerodynamic to reduce consumption fuel of gas consumption. right you guys pay a lot more in fuel in europe than the us is that right yeah 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 okay well thank you so much the, the right. double uh, windshield that you have is a clever idea though well if any of you need rv or coach accessories whether you're in europe or north america go check out their website i'll put the link down in the description below and on top of bus and rv blinds they sure know how to make some delicious lattes. Starbucks, I'm sorry, but you guys got nothing on the Scalabrini brothers. Sit down and take some notes. So, guys, uh, this is Mangana. Correct. And how do you pronounce your name? Tom. Tom. Yeah. Your name's so easy. easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too easy to be true. <laughs> I've been talking with these two guys for what, a month now? Very soon. A month, a month. ago. They yeah. have a YouTube channel where uh, basically they're with a bus magazine in Norway. Yeah. And they traveled all the way from Norway to come here to check this event out. And a month ago, he reached out to me, Mangana. Yes. Reached out to me uh, to see if we could meet. And here we are. We just ran into each other. You've been to New York. You've been to Florida. Hopefully we can gain some American followers. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. we can gain some American customers so that we can come here more often to make more videos. Because I've seen your YouTube video, you're driving all bun a whole bunch of different buses all the time. You get to test drive them. Do, do the bus companies just let you do that? Or how do you get to drive someone else's buses and so many of them by being a bus magazine? Because here in the US, if you walk into a bus company and say, I'm with a bus magazine, let me drive your bus, they would tell you to go away. So how does that work in Norway? Okay, yes. Uh, I have been in the business for 20 years and we have built up the name. So, okay, so you it's, it's a little bit more easy because you, you don't have to have a special driver license more than the bus driver license okay. in Europe. And after some years when we get the name built up, everyone relies on us, we, they trust us, and now we can easily just... Now uh, they are excited when you show yes, up. Yes, okay. they, they want us, they invite us. They said, okay, come over, we have a new bus, we have a new coach that you can drive. Yeah. And, and we are free to do that. We can even take, the, take it on the road for, for several days. Wow, wow, they just yeah. let you take the... Yeah, we wouldn't yeah. do that here in the US. We'd be like, eh, no. <laughs> so the last big video we did, there was a big video in the Alps. We had a coach from Volvo. We picked her up at the factory. We had uh, three days alone wow. on the road. And they just sit here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let us take the key and wow. drive. I wish that's how yeah. it worked here. <laughs> so what we do then, I, I'm a photographer, videographer. I fly the drone, we make the scenic and cinematic. We may also make the cinematic uh, views of the field, yeah. so we go to the beautiful spots and we show them to the people with the buses driving through it. So we're not only testing the buses, we're also going out there and showing the great sceneries we are passing through. Oh, yeah. So we are trying to also engage people that maybe not that interested in the coaches or buses. We're also Get trying them. to make great yeah. travel videos yeah. and make those crazy drone shots yeah. to make people engaged if you're liking coaches or not. Very, very nice. And so, right. both of you have bus licenses in, in, in the Netherlands. Right? Both of us are, are professional. Professional. You used to drive bus. coach bus yes. drives before you did this. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. I run my own company for several years. So you had a fleet? Yes. Wow. Yeah. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 32 years old. And how old are you? 45. Wow, you guys have done so much. I recently did a video on why do Europeans find American buses so ugly? And I have thousands of comments some from Europeans some from Americans obviously some of them got very angry with each other do you think American buses are not as good looking or modern looking in comparison to European buses for me I think the I think they're very similar you think they're similar okay I think they're quite the same built they're quite square shaped and they don't have this big design solutions that we might have and also the interior is also a little bit more simple but I think also they're quite nice. I, I think they're charming. I like them. I don't have anything in mind or against the American bus companies. And I really love seeing, especially what we have behind us now. We have a Prios, we have beautiful coaches here. And I think the high-end buses here is coming up to a good level right yeah, now. Yeah, we're but, starting to modernize. Yes, but, but when you're talking about city buses, yeah. you have a long way to walk. It's, it's an old, old style. Yeah. So we, when we talk to coaches, I, I think, I think, think many similar? coaches is sexy in the US, okay. but the city buses are boring. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you're right. I agree with you. Your city buses look, some of them look like motor coaches. Yes. 
I hate to even say this. Have you ever seen one of our school buses? Do you know about school bus? Yes. Because in Europe, when you guys use the bus and purpose it for school bus, it's a nice city transit bus. Or, or even a coach. coach. Or even a coach. Yeah, yeah. I know the Van Hool C models we use here. We call them luxury motor coaches, but I know in Europe they use them mainly for school buses. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's such a difference in quality and yeah. uh, standards. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different world. It's a different it is. world. Yeah. 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 Wow, Tom and Magna, what great insights. Uh, I still can't believe that these two can just walk into any bus company and they would just give them the keys to their newest coach and let them take it for several days on end without any question. And so it's an honor to be able to meet with you, the CEO. The honor is, the honor is mine. Thank you very much for stopping by. It's, it's great to have you guys. So I have a question for you. Go ahead. I don't know if I have the answer. Yeah. <laughs> but as someone from overseas, and I want your honest opinion, do you find buses in the U.S. less appealing, less uh, aesthetically pleasing to look at than the ones in Europe? I cannot say that right today. If you would have asked that a decade ago, uh -huh. probably I would agree. Okay. Uh, but today, if you look at the show and particularly to our vehicles, I would argue uh, whether they are ugly. I think they are uh, pretty competitive in terms of exterior uh, design, mm -hmm. uh, inside out, uh, sure. front, quarter, rear, rear quarter. Mm -hmm. I think those are very uh, compelling vehicles. But they were not uh, maybe 10 years ago. Right. But today, uh, I think uh, that uh, gap has been more and more it's closing. Uh, closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with these. These look yeah. amazing. Now, I, I, there, there's a saying in Turkish, so it's, it's our baby, you know. But to be objective, uh, I like the design, so yeah. it's, it's very uh, up to date. Yes, yes. Uh, I think it, it reflects uh, also some uh, European upscale uh, lines uh, right. in it. So I think that line is getting more gray and gray. Uh, sure. So the, the difference between European look and states is changing. So the one one of my viewers asked, look at the Temsa, for example, in the U.S. I don't know why they modify them to look so ugly. They were referring to the TS. 45, and then they say, look at all the product lines of Temsas in Europe. And I, I looked up pictures of them, and they were much more rounder. And the one thing I noticed is, you guys don't put bumpers on the on the buses in Europe. The, at least they don't we protrude do. outwards. Yes, but that is the design feature compulsory in states uh, because of the uh, regulations. regulations. Ah, yeah. But now we've learned. Uh, in down down the road in multiple years how to look at that with aesthetics rather than having a chin out yeah now, uh, <laughs> we have a good way of blending this in a part of the design feature why is it that all the buses coming here have two windshields and in Europe they're all single I think that's smart so it's a, from total cost of perspective this is smart yeah but in Europe aesthetics comes uh, first before ah. before this I one if you take one element from states, I think cost of ownership and serviceability okay. is king here. Different mindset yeah. and this is a good thing. What is the main difference by building a coach for the European market compared to the American market? Good question. That's a good one. Uh, I think in Europe we have more competition. Uh, that makes you uh, to be uh, more into the uh, very details in order to uh, have the differentiation. Uh, but in, in states, I think it's more challenging in terms of uh, the geographical conditions. State seems a single country, uh, but uh, you have uh, like Minnesota, you have uh, Orlando, you have Seattle, you have California, all different requirements. Uh, and in one bus you need to convey all that uh, opportunities and that features that uh, is relevant to that uh, geography. I think that's a challenge, although it's seems US is single, it is not, it's multiple locations, so we try to combine all that in it. Thank Were you. you always a bus lover? Uh, I've, I've been always an automotive guy, Okay. Uh, but I love buses. When you Commercial were a kid, did you think you would be a CEO of a bus manufacturer? Probably I wouldn't, Good, but okay. I'm always uh, into the engineering stuff, so ah, that's okay. my profession. I'm uh, you a mechanical engineering engineer. Yeah, ah, okay, I am a mechanical sense. engineer. I've always worked in the uh, manufacturing design yeah, development yeah. side. Uh, so I ran a design engineering house for 13 Very years. Nice. So I was always into machines, and this <laughs> is the ultimate sophisticated machine. And one thing, oh. it's in terms we discuss about uh, design a lot, right? Yeah. So it's 
goddamn multiple times easier, thousand times easier to design a sports car. Really? This is an art because sports car, the proportions, proportions yeah. are give you large wheels, uh, the wind slick. Yeah. Okay, you have every opportunity to make. It's almost impossible uh, to design an ugly sports car, right? That's that's an art to yeah. design yeah, yeah. an ugly sports yeah. car. <laughs> but here, because space is so important to us. Uh, it needs to have a rectangular shape. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because we yeah, need yeah. to fit that many passengers. We need to uh, fit a lot of luggage space. So it is a lot challenging yeah. to design a bus a fashionable way than a sports car. So therefore, I love it. This is a challenge. Very true. So a lot of people wouldn't imagine, wouldn't think that. A lot of people I meet say it's just a box with wheels. So uh, it's very interesting to hear you say that, especially someone with a mechanical engineering background. It, it is a challenge. So guys, did you hear that? Even though it's a box on wheels, it is so much harder to design a bus that is true. than a sports car. You guys remember that. This came from the CEO <laughs> of Gemsa. I mean, you can't find a better, more reliable source. Thank you. What Thank was you. your name again, sir? Tolga. Tolga. Tolga, it's a pleasure to meet nice you. To meet you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Take care. Day. Have a safe trip home. Bye. I never would have thought that designing a bus would be more difficult and more involving than designing a sports car. So for all of you that left me comments like a bus is just a bus or it's just a box on wheels, why are you so excited about these? Well, take a lesson from Tolga, the CEO of Temsa Bus with a mechanical engineering background that has been in the automotive field as well. Not as simple as you guys thought. Hi, Danielle. My name is James. I know you. You do? <laughs> yeah, she told me. You're a YouTuber. <laughs> You're the first guy I've followed in, in, in America. Oh. You have no idea that, that I'm humbled. Thank you. Guys, this is the CEO oh, we, of yeah. Irizar. By the way. The CEO, the big head um, Spanish company, Spanish, Spanish coach. Company, yeah. oh, are you from Spain? Do you have time? Yes. It's a long story. I love long <laughs> stories. I'm coming from Australia. I was okay. there for about 10 years. That explains, you told me about the accent, that's right, yeah, that explains it. But I'm actually Brazilian. You're Brazilian, yeah, that's so, so cool. Yeah. You've got a big audience, so I... Well, thank you. I can't believe, the, the CEO of, of Irizar watches my channel. That's, I'm honored. I do. Thank you. Uh, when I got appointed to this um, uh, role, I started looking for information about Research. the coach. Yeah. yeah. And I went into the YouTube, and I just typed motor coach. American market yep. and I came and, oh, wow. the first. <laughs> and I said all right well let's let's sign up for this channel and I've been watching you since then thank you so much yeah, I'm yeah. touched can I ask you guys a question yep. I mean, are you all of you with uh, are. Are. Yeah. okay why is it that I all these Europeans that watch my channel say why do Europeans find American buses so ugly but the product line too I noticed that in Europe like Van Hool they have like 20 different product lines, but, but in the U.S. there's three. And so I don't know if your ears are, it has the same. You have one. You have one. One in the U.S. How one, many? One here and uh, how many in, in Europe we do have uh, eight. Eight. Seven, eight. Yeah, so eight. can you explain that? Oh, yeah, so it's, it, it's always challenging to uh, industrialize one product to so many regulations. So primarily we industrialize our products in Europe because we are in Europe. That's the market where we were born and that's where we sell most. Okay. But uh, when we start a market like America, which is pretty challenging, so we need to bring to the standards that the regulations require. You kind of have to reinvent the wheel. Not essentially reinvent the wheel, but there is a lot of uh, cultural sort uh. of things that takes place when when um, you, you need to do the, the adaptation. So the bump, you touch, you're touching a very good subject, which is the bumper. Yeah. bumper so, and, the, and the divided windshield. The, the, that's, yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Windshield, it's another one. Everyone's it's in Europe and it's a unique windshield. Yes, big it's one, all one, screen, one piece. But, uh, but here. Yeah. But see, from, uh, coming from a co-owner of a bus company, I love the fact that it's damage mitigation. If when the windshield gets yes. chipped, I don't have to replace yeah. the whole piece. That's yeah. cultural. But in Europe, they all solid big they're, and, they're and, thicker and bonded are they thicker no they're not thicker oh. they, they, they bonded yes. but i think that there, there, there are a lot less challenges in europe with that so there's yeah. not so much dirt roads in europe yeah, yeah uh, okay. you know the the problems with flying gravels you know right. chipping windows and, and you guys tend to drive and slower and in europe right the, yes the, the, yes, the, the, yes, the road yes, speeds yes, are yes, a lot slower quite, quite, a slower. quite <laughs> significantly yes, yes. Significantly so not as much force when a rock does hit the 
Yeah, well, yeah, probably, probably, yes. yeah, probably yeah. that's one of the reasons. From the well. dynamics yeah. perspective, yeah, 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 you could consider that as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, that answer. I hope that answers a lot of your questions, guys. <laughs> you see what I do for all of you? <laughs> Talk to these big wigs. It's an honor. To, are all of you traveling here from Spain? From uh, he is. Yeah. Uh, he is our after sales manager. He looks after America from Spain. Okay. Asia is the former president, so we're oh. transitioning now. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Are you retiring? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no yet. Not no yet. yet. <laughs> uh, Victor, Victor is our technician. So okay. he, he's what we call a flying technician. So okay. he goes yeah. all around all the country. Everywhere yeah. and, and USA. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. Um, do you guys experience a lot of local bus company owners? They, ha they tend to have a phobia of buying something that's not domestic, especially... It's, it's a bit of a natural reaction. Yeah, to... so you have this little barrier to get over to sell your bus as opposed to something like MCI. Does that... Are you? Do you feel like that you guys can get over that without too much of a loss of competition? Are we, you are successful? In we are in 93 countries. Awesome. And we are so America's yeah. 100, 130 years old. You're proven. So, yeah, you're proven. Yeah. and that speaks Absolutely. for itself. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's a process. It takes on some time. It takes time, but we will be there. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, you guys have a rich history. It's not like you just started building buses. No, no. It's, uh, we started with uh, horses, carriages. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share with you a video that talks about our history. So it's 130 years old. If you share with me that video, then I will make a video on the history of Iriza. Oh. Done deal. And uh, are you okay with me putting some of this on? on oh, the, okay. No, 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 absolutely right. not. I always want to make sure. It's, it's an yeah, absolute pleasure. I can't afford to get sued. <laughs> no, no, you know. <laughs> I'm not rich He's enough. not going to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Nice to meet all James. of you. Thank you. Have a safe trip. Nice Have a safe trip, sir. Thank you. Take care. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, James. Okay. Did I mention how much of a high I got from hearing Daniel Scarfino, the CEO of Irizar Bus, tell me that he is a fan of my channel and watch my videos to get acclimated to the North American bus market. Daniel and the rest of your team, I hope you guys are watching this one. It was such a pleasure to speak with all of you and thank you guys so much for your insight. Now, before we cut to the outro, let me give a quick review on uh, this flashlight and uh, this battery pack charger from For Patriots. Um, again, as mentioned before, I gave uh, some of these to my drivers and techs. They gave me a lot of good feedback. So let's start with the flashlight. This is the tactical solar flashlight. Uh, it's a flashlight with a solar charger that uh, will charge the flashlight from solar. Uh, if you want to charge the flashlight in the conventional ways, there is a full USB port and a USB-C port uh, on the back. Uh, it also comes with a neat little compass. Uh, also on this flashlight uh, is a uh, window breaker and a seat belt cutter in the event that you need to break out of a vehicle. Uh, this flashlight has the regular front beam with uh, several settings. Also, if you hold down the button, uh, you can actually turn on this feature where it has a side light. Uh, the side light comes with several different functions, dim, bright uh, settings, and if you hold it down again, it changes to a red beacon, really good for emergency road flare usage. If you hold the button down again, it comes to a slower pattern. If you hold down the button again, it goes back to the front facing uh, beam. So now the one thing the drivers did say about this flashlight is it's a great flashlight for you to keep in the vehicle. This sharp uh, window breaker will uh, start poking through your bag, cause some damage. If you have a laptop or anything sensitive in that bag, this thing will start scratching it up. You really don't want this. You can actually twist it off. It's, you can put a wrench to it and it looks like it'll twist off. Also the seatbelt cutter, uh, it's, it's nice to have, but it just adds another uh, little thing that protrudes out. So not a the best flashlight to like carry on your belt. Now there are two Allen wrench screw holes there that you can, looks like you can remove this as well. The drivers did say if I was assigned a permanent bus, this would be a great flashlight to keep on the bus. Uh, so, okay, let's move on to the battery pack. This is a cellular phone battery pack charger. Uh, there are uh, several ways to charge it. Uh, two USB ports and a small USB micro. One right thing right off the bat, I wish this was a USB-C. This also has a solar array uh, where you can recharge the battery pack to give you unlimited renewable energy to use to charge your phones out on the field if you're gonna be out in nature a lot and have no access to power plugs. What I also love about this is if you push the power button, it turns on a little LED light. Uh, it gives you a nice little dim, dim night light. Uh, and it also flashes and you push it a couple patterns. This is a 8,000 milliamp uh, battery pack. So it's a smaller battery pack, 
The battery packs I typically carry around are about 10,000 to 15,000. Uh, this gave me three good charges on my phone, which is pretty good. I drained my phone entirely of power, used this to charge it up once, twice, and three times. After the third time, it didn't have any more juice on it. So um, not a bad pack to carry around. I tested the solar array, left it out for a full day and a half um, for it to uh, charge my phone again, and I got two charges out of that. So I don't think it charged it to full. So uh, if you're gonna rely on the solar array, definitely uh, give it lots of time. Those are my reviews for the uh, for Patriots tactical flashlight and the battery pack. Randy, I hope I did you justice. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for all the really neat tools. I definitely will be carrying these around because I love flashlights. Who doesn't like a good flashlight? Guys and gals, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.